Prairie, Wisconsin. I am a proud L trans woman, and I moved to Sun Prairie about six years ago. I'm also a member of the diversity committee that brought these ordinances to the city. And I can tell you that as one of the most discriminated against um, demographics in our, in our country, I strongly welcome and support the passage of these ordinances. And Mayor, thank you for your wonderful opening statements, a lot of which I would have said, but I'm going to keep it short. So okay. thank you, and I support them. Thank you, Ginger. Thank you. And then next, we have uh, Deborah Walling. Uh, opposed but does not wish to speak, and Terry Wally wishes to speak in opposition. Terry, would you would uh, come and introduce yourself, and give us your address? Terry Wally, 6649 Tarrant Trail here in Sun Prairie. Sovereignty, the extreme power or authority. Business owners, property owners, churches are sovereign in their property. For a state government to tell them what they can and cannot do with their property, how they must or must not act, is inappropriate. We welcome all in this community. We love all in this community. People are free here to live any way they like, and we support that. When you take the personal preference of an individual and place that upon a community, its businesses, its churches, its property owners, and tell them what they can and cannot do with their own property, that's wrong. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. And Jean Beatty, uh, opposition does not wish to speak. And Gary Benjamin is opposed and wishes to speak. Gary, if you would please come to the podium and introduce yourself. My name is Gary Benjamin, 2315 Montana Avenue. Married, four children, three boys and one girl, my daughter, is here, 12 years old. Uh, we uh, attend Refinery Church in Sun Prairie, uh, Bible-believing church. We welcome all people to Sun Prairie. Our church welcomes all the people to Sun Prairie. Uh, but sometimes, what I think people don't understand in this country is that if, and I'm not going to identify anything specific here, but if people are making choices that are not good, the best way to love those people is to let them know that the choices they're making are harmful for them. That is love. That is not hate. Hate is actually allowing somebody to do something that's dangerous for them and not addressing it for them. Just like with my children. If I were to allow them to do things that were harmful for them, that wouldn't be love, that would be hate of my children. And, and that's what we believe. Uh, when you address the ordinances, you didn't, for myself, I, I'm not going to address them exactly because I don't know what they are exactly as well as I'm sure there are some people back here that can. But the one thing I would like you to do is to tell me what it is, because you told me things that it wasn't, but you didn't really tell me what it was. And that would be helpful, I think, for me and everybody out there to understand more of what it really is, or at least as you understand it to be. Is that fair? Well, we're getting your statement, so if that's your statement. That's my statement. Thank you, Gary. So next, I have a uh, speaker registration card from Mary J.J. Best in opposition, doesn't wish to speak, but you've written some things on here, Mary. Would you like me to read those into the record? Yes, please. Okay. So she says, I am not opposed to the housing ordinance. I am opposed to the ordinance on accommodation and employment. I have contacted all officials regarding this issue. Then, next is Denise Bloom, also in opposition and does not wish to speak. And Rick Bloom, also in opposition and wishes to speak. So Rick, would you come to the podium, please? Thank you. I, I, I would start out with an apology uh, to you, Mayor, and uh, the council members and the people that were part of
part of the community, I don't know who you all were, uh, several years ago I was involved in a process of, of uh, a building project. And in the process of it, it was, it was a church building that we were building in, and in the process of this thing, we had like a year and a half, which seems to be the same time schedule we have here, uh, a year and a half of uh, people meeting together and discussing what we needed in these rooms and that room and all those types of things. And, and we got it all done. And we got down to the very last meeting, and we as, as a church were getting ready to vote on, okay, yes or no on this thing. And some guy shows up out of the blue. And, and, I, and my apology is, that's me here today. There's been a lot of work, and I, I commend those folks that have been part of this committee researching this and looking at it and going through all that. Type of, I, I know it's a lot of work. And then I come along at the last moment and say, ah, but, and that's why I'm mad. I, 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 have to, I have to suggest to you that uh, this fellow that uh, I met several years ago who came up at that last moment and said, but, one of the good things that came out of that, though, is he had some good points, and he listened to and we listened to him, and we made the minor corrections that needed to be made, and, and it, we were better for it at that point. I listened to what has been said thus far. I listened to your comments, Mr. Mayor, and, and uh, I, I, I understand the ideal of ordinances. Uh, we as a counselor, you as a counselor, are coming here to decide on a couple of ordinances tonight. Uh, make a decision, get input from the community. And as you look at those things, uh, you may be understanding those ordinances in one way and understanding what your intent is and, and all along that line. But I suggest to you that when litigation gets involved in it, it's going to be out of your hands. Because it's up to the court then to decide how these things are read and what the meanings are. And so if the, if the ordinances are written in such a way that they're left to some confusion in some areas, uh, you're not the final say here. Uh, the final say could be some court somewhere. Because I, I, I reckon, I, I suggest to you, <laughs> this is a hot potato. I, and I've had opportunity to uh, to send emails to each of our uh, older persons here. And I've got responses from a couple of you, and I appreciate that. I'm just assuming the rest of you are probably busy with other things and, and can understand that also. Because I don't always get on the emails and get the responses back to me like, like I want to. But I'd like to read to you the, uh, the draft of that that email that I sent out to, to uh, you ladies and gentlemen, if I could. Sun Prairie's Ad Hoc Steering Committee on Diversity was present, has presented its final report to the city. While I can agree with this committee chair that Sun Prairie is a growing and vibrant community, I am fearful that the recommendations of these 16 committee members will result in the very opposite. The outcome of their proposal seemed to have been predetermined from the outset by a leadership bent on promoting diversity, a catchphrase of contemporary culture. Claiming to be a representation of the people of Sun Prairie, the report shares that a total of up to 45 other individuals participated in four poorly advertised community meetings. I use the phrase up to because their own report suggests that some participate, participated in more of these meetings. These meetings seem to have accomplished nothing more than give cover to the leadership that the community at large had been invited to participate and comment. While several good points came out of those small gatherings, only two suggestions even get a hint to dealing with the issue of diversity. It seemed that those who attended were more concerned with issues of transportation, city workforce, schools, opportunities for youth, communication, recreation, housing, child care, and economic development. Rather than diversity, most people seem to have other things on their minds. I have lived in several small cities and, and towns, and I found that these issues form a common theme in most communities. These are the things people are really interested in are struggling with. These are the issues our city government should be addressing, but instead they have become embroiled with today's political hot potato that seemingly protects one group to the exclusion of others. No, I'm not in favor of discrimination in any form or fa fashion, but why do we seek out diversity in our hiring practices rather than just finding the best qualified person for a job? Why have people's private lives become so public that it becomes the basis for any form of consideration in any matter? In the positive drive to avoid discrimination, the very practice of discrimination has become the reality. I have a problem with the two proposals that are being brought before the City Council. The first proposal, section 9.21.010, part C states, quote, 
to protect the health, safety, and general welfare of all the inhabitants of the city. I don't have any problem with that. Mayor, I agree with you. That's what, that's what our job is. That's what your job is. And all persons employed or living within the city, it is declared to be the public policy of the city to foster and enforce to the fullest extent of the law equal opportunity employment and public accommodations without regard to actual or perceived race, color, creed, religion, national origin, ancestry, age, sex, gender, disability, arrest, conviction record, marital status, sexual orientation, gender identity, and or gender expression, political affiliation, results of genetic testing, honesty testing, pregnancy or childbirth, military service, disability or disabled veteran or covered veteran status, service in the U.S. Armed Force, the state's defense force, National Guard of any state or any reserve component of the United States or state's military forces, or an individual's affiliation with or perceived affiliation with any of these protected categories. I thought if I read that paragraph, I'm, I'm watching one of those commercials on TV, which says to me, here's this medicine, it's gonna cure you of this. But, the vast majority of the time, the commercials talk about all the side effects. There's certain things I would look at, I think I'd rather be sick than take the medicine and the risks that they're involved in. <laughs> as far as equal opportunity employment, I have no issue. My issue is the confusion of a city claiming to protect the health, safety, and general welfare of all inhabitants, and yet deny a little girl's right to use a public bathroom at a local eating establishment, or place commerce, uh, uh, or place of commerce, while her mother's fear of some guy who feels he's a girl walking in on her. Where does the health, safety, and general welfare of that mother and child come into play? Have we all become crazy in our days? Where is common sense gone? Who's protecting the little girl's innocence? Rather than fighting a battle for public accommodations of, of these protected categories, shouldn't the city be interested in protecting our young children? I know that you've said, Mr. Mayor, that uh, uh, that's not the intent here. But as written, a lawyer, and I'm not a lawyer, but I, I would venture to guess it could easily be skewed in that direction. That I have a concern about. The second proposal, section 920.0110, will ultimately read, I, I took, your, uh, took the uh, uh, material and, and got rid of the parts you've already uh, blacked out and put in there, put, to kind of put it together as ways I understand it's possibly finally read. And, and the second proposal ultimately will read, it is declared to be the policy of the city to assure equal opportunity to all persons to live in decent housing facilities regardless of age, color, family status, gender identity, and or gender expression, marital status, national origin, ancestry, race, religion, persons with disability, sex, sexual orientation, source of lawful income or victims of domestic violence, sexual assault or stalking, and to that end, to prohibit discrimination in housing by any persons. Again, I'm not opposed to all persons to live in decent housing. In listing out the exceptions, I'm concerned that 25% of the concerns listed here have to do with sexual orientation. Herein lies the pretense of one and a half years of committee work. The goal from the beginning was to increase the diversity of our community. I'm not interested in our town looking like Appleton or Janesville. I like Sun Prairie. And I like it the way it is. And I'm not certain that we need to enforce or bring forward new ordinances that are realistically, they're already on the books to some degree in the state and the federal and in the federal world. Why do we need to incorporate them here? Mayor answers and says, because we want the community outside of our community to know where we stand so it might encourage others to move in here. If we don't have enough things already to encourage the outside to want to come and make an investment in our community, you think changing this ordinance is really going to bring about a whole lot of interest in our community. We have a lot of positive things here. We just gave recognition to several groups that have already done some great things here just recently. We have lots more of those type of things all around us. Why do we have to put forward these type of proposals? I therefore, 
what called upon our city council to reject the two proposals at hand as nothing more than the personal agendas of a few to the exclusion of the many that make up our great community. I would propose that everyone put away discrimination in all of its forms, that people be hired for positions because they are qualified, and that housing and shelter be found for those who have need. But primarily, I propose that little boys and little girls be given the opportunity to grow up in a safe community without adult nonsense, and that they would learn to be respectful, hardworking, and contributors to the continued growth and well-being of our city. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend.